Ford's EcoBoost engines combine cutting-edge engineering with turbocharged power, delivering thrilling performance and fuel efficiency that reshaped expectations for modern vehicles. But like any innovation, they come with challenges that is hard to ignore. In this video, we're exploring both sides, what makes EcoBoost engines a marvel of engineering and where they tend to falter. Ford's three-cylinder EcoBoost engines were introduced as a groundbreaking solution for drivers seeking a balance of fuel efficiency, power, and reduced emissions. Available in 1.0-liter and 1.5-liter displacements, they promise to deliver the performance of larger engines in a smaller, more economical package. With advanced features like turbocharging, direct injection, and dual overhead camshafts combined with variable valve timing, Ford positioned these engines as marvels of engineering. The 1.0-liter engine, in particular, gained widespread attention for its compact size and high torque output, winning multiple International Engine of the Year awards. The turbocharger allowed the smaller 1.0-liter engine to produce power equivalent to a larger naturally aspirated engine, making it a perfect fit for compact cars like the Ford Fiesta and 2013 to 2018 Ford Focus. Similarly, the 1.5-liter version offered more power and efficiency, finding its way into vehicles like the Ford Escape, Puma and Ford Fiesta in some market. The compact size of these engines also reduced vehicle weight, improving handling and fuel economy. For eco-conscious drivers, the lower CO2 emissions were a major selling point. However, despite their innovative designs, these engines have struggled with significant reliability issues that have left many owners disappointed. One of the most problematic aspects of the 1-liter EcoBoost engine is its wet belt system. Instead of using a traditional timing chain or a dry timing belt, this engine uses a belt-in oil design where the timing belt runs inside the engine's oil system. While this design was intended to improve efficiency by reducing friction, it introduced significant durability issues. The wet belt has been prone to premature wear, often breaking or degrading long before the recommended replacement interval of around 150,000 miles. When the belt begins to degrade, small particles can contaminate the engine oil, leading to clogged oil passages, oil starvation, and eventual engine failure. Worse still, replacing the wet belt is a labor-intensive process, often requiring the engine to be dismantled, making it an expensive repair for owners. This has led to widespread criticism and numerous complaints about Ford's decision to use this system in the 1-liter EcoBoost engine. The 1-liter EcoBoost engine is notorious for overheating issues caused by a flawed cooling system design. Over time, leaks in the cooling system became common, often going unnoticed until the engine overheated. In extreme cases, this led to head gasket failures or complete engine failure. The 1.5-liter three-cylinder EcoBoost Dragon engine includes innovative features in the later version like a combination of port and direct fuel injection for better performance and cylinder deactivation to improve fuel economy. One significant problem with this engine is coolant leaking into the oil system at the oil cooler, a flaw that can lead to oil dilution and severe engine damage if not addressed promptly. Similarly, Leaks between the cylinder head and engine block have also caused oil dilution, compounding long-term wear on internal components. Adding to the concerns, the engine's high-pressure fuel injectors are prone to cracking, which can result in fuel leaks, reduced performance, and even potential fire risks. Another problematic feature is the use of a wet timing belt for the oil pump, similar to the 1-liter EcoBoost engine. Turbocharger failures, often caused by overheating or insufficient lubrication, led to a dramatic loss of power and costly repairs. For owners relying on these engines for daily commuting, these failures were a major inconvenience and expense. Ford has issued several technical service bulletins and a bunch of recall affecting vehicles equipped with the 1-liter and 1.5-liter EcoBoost engines like Ford Fiesta, EcoSport and Focus, addressing issues like coolant leaks and replacing parts. A class-action lawsuit was also filed against Ford even recently, alleging the company over issues such as coolant leak and overheating and wet belt failures. In response to these widespread issues, Ford has made several updates like dual injection system, redesigned pump and generally cooling system and cylinder deactivation. And Ford has hinted at moving away from wet belt designs. Four-cylinder EcoBoost engines are available in various displacements. They combine cutting-edge technologies like turbocharging, direct injection, and variable valve timing. 
These innovations allowed Ford to maintain power levels comparable to naturally aspirated six-cylinder engines, while meeting stricter emissions and fuel efficiency standards. Turbocharging allowed smaller engines like the 1.5-liter and 1.6-liter to deliver ample power for compact cars such as the Ford Fusion and the Ford Escape up to 2019 model years. The larger 2.0-liter EcoBoost, found in vehicles like the Ford Edge and 2011 to 2020 Ford Explorer, provided a balance of power and efficiency in mid-sized SUVs. Meanwhile, the high-performance 2.3-liter EcoBoost, powering models like the post-2015 Ford Mustang EcoBoost, showcased Ford's ability to achieve sports car-worthy performance with a four-cylinder design. Additionally, the lighter weight of these engines improved overall vehicle dynamics, enhancing handling and acceleration. However, the same advanced features that made these engines innovative also introduced reliability issues that have tarnished their reputation. One of the most notorious problems with four-cylinder EcoBoost engines is coolant intrusion into the cylinders, particularly in the 1.5-liter, 1.6-liter, and 2-liter variants. These compact engines rely on extensive cooling to generate their rated immense power, and this is achieved through an open-deck design with grooves between the cylinders. Unfortunately, this has resulted in coolant to leaking into the combustion chamber. Over time, this causes in misfires, white smoke from the exhaust, and eventually catastrophic engine failure. Ford issued a TSB and addressed the issue in post-2019 models by redesigning the block with better deck and coolant flow jacket to prevent coolant intrusion. The 1.5-liter and 1.6-liter EcoBoost poorly designed coolant hoses were prone to leaks, often leading to overheating. Similarly, the 2.0-liter EcoBoost experienced exhaust manifold and block cracking, further exacerbating reliability concerns. And the exhaust manifold is partially integrated with the engine block at the top for better thermal management in some versions, meaning a leak requires replacing the entire assembly. While direct injection improved performance and efficiency, it introduced a major drawback, carbon buildup on intake valves. These deposits restrict airflow, causing rough idling, reduced power, and lower fuel economy. This problem is mostly prevalent in the 2.0-liter and 2.3-liter EcoBoost engines, which rely solely on direct injection. One of the several recalls and technical service bulletin issued by Ford is due to 2-liter EcoBoost engine well-documented coolant intrusion problem. The fix involved installing a new engine block or updating the software to detect overheating early. The 2.3-liter EcoBoost, used in high-performance models like the Ford Mustang EcoBoost, has been especially prone to turbo-related issues due to the added stress of high boost levels. The high-pressure fuel pump is a known weak point, as it must operate under extremely high pressure to deliver fuel. Ford has taken steps to improve its four-cylinder EcoBoost engines in recent years. For example, newer versions of the 2.3-liter EcoBoost now feature dual injection systems that combine direct and port injection. As I said earlier, the 1.5-liter EcoBoost has received updates to its fuel system and engine block design, addressing the oil dilution and coolant intrusion issues. Ford has also begun integrating hybrid systems into its EcoBoost lineup, which could reduce the stress placed on the internal combustion engine. Available in 2.7-liter, 3.0-liter, and 3.5-liter displacements, the six-cylinder EcoBoost engines represented the pinnacle of Ford's downsizing strategy, and they are reasonably dependable. The 2.7-liter EcoBoost, designed for lighter trucks and SUVs like the 2015 and later Ford F-150 and 2019 and later Ford Edge, provided an excellent balance of power and efficiency. Meanwhile, the 3.5-liter EcoBoost, used in vehicles like the 2015 to present Ford Expedition and Lincoln Navigator, offered a V8 replacement capable of impressive towing capacities. These engines use twin turbochargers, which ensure rapid throttle response and reduce turbo lag and high torque delivery at low RPMs, a critical feature for towing and hauling. They rely on direct injection, but in the iterations, Ford introduced dual injection systems. The 3.5-liter EcoBoost earned accolades for its towing capabilities, with some models rated to tow over 13,000 pounds. The 2.7-liter EcoBoost, though smaller, provided a balance of fuel efficiency and power, making it a popular choice for those not requiring maximum towing capacity. 
These engines set benchmarks in their class for power output and versatility. One of the most significant issues with the 3.5-liter EcoBoost engine is timing chain stretch, which occurs when the chain wears prematurely due to inadequate lubrication or design flaws. This problem often leads to symptoms such as rattling noises during startup, engine misfires, and in severe cases, catastrophic engine failure if the chain skips or breaks. Ford later addressed this issue by redesigning the timing system to include two separate timing chains, one for each cylinder bank, which improved durability and reduced the likelihood of premature wear. Another common issue with the first and second gen 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine is cam phaser failure. Drivers often report a distinct clunking noise during startup, caused by the phasers not advancing or retarding the camshaft timing properly. While the engine typically continues to run fine despite this noise, ignoring the issue or using low-quality oil can lead to long-term wear on engine components. In humid conditions, the 3.5-liter EcoBoost suffered from excessive condensation within the intercooler. This water could enter the engine during acceleration, causing misfires or sudden power loss. Ford addressed this issue by revising the intercooler design in later models, but early owners faced significant challenges. Turbocharger failures have also been reported, often caused by oil starvation or overheating. The 3.5-liter EcoBoost engine also faced issues with its plastic oil pan gasket, which often failed to seal properly, though this was improved in later generations. Another less common problems include vacuum pump failures and coolant and oil leaks caused by defective hose fittings or cracks in the valve cover. There was also a recent issue with intake valve failure, which Ford promptly addressed. This issues not only led to costly repairs, but also highlighted the importance of regular maintenance to prevent severe engine damage. Ford made significant updates to the six-cylinder EcoBoost lineup in response to these problems. Post-2017 versions of the 3.5-liter EcoBoost feature dual fuel injection systems and robust timing chain setup. Generally, EcoBoost engines can deliver impressive longevity, but only with diligent care and maintenance. Regular oil changes are critical, as this helps prevent sludge buildup and clogged piston oil rings. Additionally, maintaining the spark plugs and ignition coils is essential. Using good quality components and replacing them as needed can reduce the risk of misfires and fouling caused by oil or carbon deposits. If you've experienced these engines firsthand, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.